with us now being at basically the halfway mark of the NHL season. Only three teams haven't hit that 41 game mark yet. Over these next couple of days, I wanted to kind of make videos recapping the first half of the season. So the first one we're going to do today is talking about the most surprising teams in the NHL at the halfway point. And of course, this could mean they have been surprising in a good way or surprising in a bad way. As always, I want to know what you guys are thinking. So if there's any teams that you feel like I missed, make sure to let me know which teams those are and why down below in the comments. And of course, if this is your first time checking out the channel and you want NHL content just like this all year round, hit that subscribe button. And with that all being said, let's go ahead and start the video off with a team that has been surprising in a good way. And that team is the Winnipeg Jets. Now I picked the Winnipeg Jets to make the playoffs, but I mean, I would definitely be lying if I said that I thought they were going to be in the President's Trophy race at the halfway point of the season, especially with how the second half of last season went and their first round exit to the Vegas Golden Knights where Craig Ruby just tore into the team in the post-game presser of their final playoff game in the offseason after buying out former captain Blake Wheeler and then trading Pierre-Luc Dubois to the Los Angeles Kings, it looked like maybe the Winnipeg Jets were going to head in a different direction, maybe a rebuild. As we all know, that was not the case. They signed Connor Hellebuck and Mark Shifley to matching eight-year extensions, and at least up until this point in the season, it looks like the Winnipeg Jets made the right call not to completely blow up this core. The Jets currently set first place in the Central Division at 28, 10, and 4. They have a top 10 offense and a top 10 defense. And I would definitely say that the biggest difference from Winnipeg Jets teams of previous seasons to this year's team is the overall team defense. This is no longer a team that just consists of high flying offensive forwards that don't really buy into the defensive side of the game and they just rely on Connor Hellebuck, who is one of the better goaltenders in the league, to bail them out. This is a very well rounded team that plays a complete 200 foot game and they've made life on Connor Hellebuck a lot easier this season. I think that's reflected in his game and his performance. He looks fresh. He's playing amazing. I think guys like Gabriel Velarde and Alex Iafalo, who came over in the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade, deserve a lot of credit for kind of transforming the Winnipeg Jets team defense, or at least in terms of the forwards. This is a team that was criticized in years past of their top players not buying into the defensive aspect of the game, being called out by their coach. And that's something that we really just haven't seen this season. The Jets' nine-game win streak was recently snapped at the hands of the Philadelphia Flyers but when it comes to that win streak, I think the most impressive part about it was the fact that they did that without Kyle Connor, who is arguably the most dynamic offensive forward on the team. The Winnipeg Jets are looking like legit contenders in the Western Conference right now. Just imagine what this team could look like if they managed to figure out their special teams. I forgot to mention this at the start of the video, so I'll just mention it now, but there's a bunch of NHL games going on right now as of the time I'm recording this, so if you notice any stats are out of date by the time you're seeing this, that's probably why. Moving along, now to the next team on my list, we have a team that has been surprising in a not so good way, and that is the Buffalo Sabres probably the most disappointing team in the NHL so far, in my opinion, just based on the expectations that I had for them coming into the season. If you watched my season standings prediction video that I made before the regular season began, I actually predicted that the Buffalo Sabres would make the playoffs, not only that, in a divisional seed in the Atlantic. And here we are, they've played 44 games and they sit seventh in the division at 19, 21, and four. My biggest concern for the Buffalo Sabres coming into the season was the defense and goaltending, but considering how good their offense was, last season, I figured that they would probably be able to outscore a lot of their problems if they at least just got serviceable defense and goaltending. That has definitely not been the case though. The Buffalo Sabres have not really been able to outscore any of their problems so far this season. They are averaging just 2.95 goals for per game, which is 23rd in the league. Of course, they've had some unfortunate injuries to top offensive players like Tage Thompson, who's missed some time, and Jack Quinn. Alex Tuck is another very important offensive player who's missed a good chunk of games, but injuries are going to happen. That happened to every team in the league. You still have to find ways to win, and this season, Buffalo really just hasn't on a consistent basis. I want to say that this roster on paper is really underachieving and that this is just going to be an outlier of a season, but at the same time, you could make that argument that maybe last year was an outlier season for them, and they're not that good of an offensive team. Moving along now to the next team on my list, we have the Boston Bruins. Probably my worst take of the season so far was predicting the Boston Bruins to finish sixth place in the Atlantic this this year. Man, has that ever aged poorly. In my defense, in my season standings prediction video, I kind of wanted to make some bold predictions in there and mix things up, and I didn't want it to be close to what the standings were last season. But even with that being said, still, 
predicting Boston to finish six. That was a rough one for me. The Bruins currently sit first place in the Atlantic Division and third place overall in the league at 25, eight and nine. I kind of figured that I was probably going to be proven wrong by the Bruins, but I didn't think I was going to be proven this wrong. Like at best, I thought they were going to be maybe a wild card team, maybe be a third seed in the Atlantic. But the fact that they are once again in the President's Trophy race after everything they lost in the off season is just insane to me. And I think it just speaks to how well run of an organization organization the Boston Bruins have. That team really has that next man up mentality. Even when guys go down with injury, you plug guys into the lineup, it seems like they always play well. And I mean, having arguably the best goaltending tandem in the NHL with Lena Stolmark and Jeremy Swayman, that's going to take you a long way. Moving along now to another team that has been surprising in a bad way. I have the Columbus Blue Jackets on my list. Now, did anybody really have sky high expectations for Columbus coming into the season? Probably not, but based off of the moves they made in the offseason, trading away a first rounder in the Ivan Provorov deal, committing all that money to Damon Severson after they traded for his UFA rights, I at least figured that this Columbus team wouldn't be in the basement of the NHL. And here they are after 43 games, there's only four teams in the NHL with less points than the Columbus Blue Jackets. I definitely think the organizational expectation was for Columbus to be competing for a playoff spot this season or they wouldn't have made the moves they made in the offseason not just Provorov and Severson, but also signing a coach like Mike Babcock, even though that didn't turn out how they expected and he didn't even make it to the regular season, but that's not a coach you sign if you don't plan on trying to win. This team is just really bad in almost every aspect of the game. They don't have a whole lot going for them right now, and I said it about the Buffalo Sabres, so I'll echo the same sentiment here. Yes, they've had some key injuries. Patrick Laine has only played in 18 games, but it's not like he looked great in those 18 games either. You also have Johnny Gaudreau, who you're paying all that money to. He's on pace for a career low in points. There's just not a whole lot going right for the Columbus Blue Jackets right now. The one positive is the young guys have looked good in the minutes they've played for the most part this season. Guys like Fantilli, Marchenko, Voronkov, Chinnikov, Kent Johnson. But even when it comes to those young players that I just listed off, guys that are the future of this team, there has been a lot of complaints so far this season from Blue Jackets fans about how those guys have been utilized. Continuing on now, the next team on my list, we have the Vancouver Canucks. I'll say the same thing about the Canucks as I said about the Winnipeg Jets. I did predict Vancouver to make the playoffs this year. I had them fourth in the Pacific, getting into one of those two wildcard spots. So it's not like I had incredibly low expectations for this team coming into the season, but Again, I'd be lying if I said I thought that they were going to be in contention for the President's Trophy, and as of the time I'm recording this, they not only lead the Pacific Division, but lead the entire NHL with 61 points in 43 games. Now, there has been a lot made this season, especially on hockey Twitter, about how the Vancouver Canucks have been winning games, people saying it's not sustainable, their PDO is just through the roof, which, for those of you who don't know, it's basically just team shooting percentage combined with team save percentage. If I'm not mistaken, the Canucks have the highest PDO rating at the halfway mark of a season since the 90s. So sure, odds are maybe the team shooting percentage or maybe the team save percentage is going to come down, but people have been saying that for months now. The Canucks have just not cooled off, and I think the reality of the situation is this team just has a lot of incredibly talented shooters and one of the better goaltenders in the league in Thatcher Demko. And even if the Vancouver Canucks do cool off and have a mediocre second half of the season, they have built themselves such a massive cushion where, again, even if their second half is mediocre, they're still probably a lock to make the playoffs. Moving along now to the next team on my list, we have the Ottawa Senators. Now, I didn't have incredibly high expectations for Ottawa coming into the season like a lot of people did. I didn't predict them to make the playoffs, but they were definitely a bubble team for me. I had them fifth place in the Atlantic. I figured that they were going to be in the hunt for a wildcard spot right until the end, but man, their first half has just been a complete disaster. Just 15 wins through 38 games only three teams in the NHL with less points than the Senators right now, and those teams are the Ducks, Blackhawks, and Sharks. Again, it's not like my expectations for this team coming into the season were through the roof, but I definitely figured that they were closer to being a top three seed in the Atlantic than being a bottom five team in the NHL. Offensively, the Senators have been solid this season, and I think everybody expected that. When fully healthy on paper, their top nine stacks up against pretty much any other top nine in the league. It's really the team defense and the goaltending that have held the Ottawa Senators 
Panthers back this season. And I'll throw coaching in there as well. I don't think any Sens fan is pleased with how the team has been coached up until this point. And I always seem to get comments whenever I talk about the Senators, whether it's in a video or on Twitter, defending Jonas Corbisalo. And sure, the defense in front of him is obviously a factor in why he's having a poor season, but also when you just isolate his performance in terms of goals saved above expected, he is the third worst in the entire league at a minus 12.55. The only goaltenders with a worse GSAX are Vitek Vanacek and Ilya Samsonov. So while yes, the defense in front of him has not been good, he hasn't really been bailing out his team either. I think it's going to be really fascinating to see what kind of approach the Ottawa Senators take to the trade deadline in early March. I've been seeing a lot of people throwing around Claude Giroux's name in trade rumors potentially. Continuing on now, the next surprising team on my list is the Philadelphia Flyers. 23-14-6 and for 52 points, currently third place in a very strong Metro division. This is a team that I had virtually no expectations for coming into the season. I did not think they would be any kind of a threat whatsoever to really even be all that close to a playoff team and really since their hot start to the season throughout the year up until now I've kind of just been waiting and waiting for them to take a massive step back and it just hasn't happened yet cannot say enough good things about how John Tortorella has coached the Philadelphia Flyers this season he has everybody bought into the system bought into the way that he wants them to play and this Flyers team just looks like they're having so much fun right now is the team offensively challenged yes they rank just 25th in terms of goals for per game they have the league's worst power play but man they are finding ways to win night in and night out and I mean you can't argue with results this team defensively has been unbelievable they have the league's best penalty kill they limit shots they limit high danger chances the goaltending has been solid and again yes this team may be offensively challenged and may not have the most gifted offensive players on the team from top to bottom but they are a high volume shooting team they throw pucks to the net they crash the net and overall their style is just really tough to play against and it's done them well so far up until this point in the season if the Philadelphia Flyers are able to maintain this and make the playoffs doesn't even have to be in a divisional seed even if they just make it in a wildcard spot John Tortorella has to be a top candidate for the Jack Adams in a league that today is just so offensively minded and just so centered around offense it's honestly really impressive how the Philadelphia Flyers have been able to find this much success while being one of the league's worst offenses and now finally finishing out the video with the last surprising team on my list we have the Minnesota Wild who currently have just 17 wins and sit seventh place in the central division it has been a very rough first half of the season for for the Minnesota Wild. They can't seem to score enough goals. They can't keep pucks out of their net. And I mean, really, that's all it comes down to. They made the change of moving on from Dean Evison and bringing in John Hines as the new head coach. And after they made that move, it looked like the Minnesota Wild were turning a corner. They were playing really well immediately under John Hines. However, that did not last long as the Minnesota Wild have now won just two games in their last 10. And they really just have not been able to find any consistency this season. Even Kirill Kaprizov doesn't look like himself. Sure, he's got 34 points in 35 games, which is nothing to scoff at, but he definitely hasn't been the game-breaking, you know, heart trophy candidate caliber player that he was the previous two seasons. Luckily for Minnesota Wild fans, Brock Faber has been a massive silver lining for that team so far this season. Without him, it's hard to imagine what this team would look like or where they'd be. So that is going to wrap up today's video. Those were, in my opinion, the most surprising teams in the NHL at the halfway point. Like I mentioned at the start, I always want to know what you guys are thinking. So if there's any team that you feel like I missed, make sure to let me know which teams those are down below in the comments and give me some reasons why. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave it a like. That is definitely the best way to show your support. And most importantly, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want NHL content just like this all year round, hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you all again soon.